Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for discussion for today is on the effect of shielding on magnetic field or inductive coupling. Okay, so today's discussion will be the A series. So please look up at the B series, okay, which continue the discussion. This will be the part 14 series discussion. Okay, I have put the earlier on series discussion on EMC under the description. So please go through all the video under the description in order to fully understand what is EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, so we are going to discuss how effective is your shielding against magnetic field coupling. Okay, so the first case that we're going to discuss is a non-magnetic shield. They actually ground at only one end. Okay, so a non-magnetic shield okay, placed around a conductor and ground at one end, they has no effect on the magnetic induced voltage in that conductor. Okay, so this is the conductor one, the noise source. Okay, so this is conductor two, okay, which is grabbed by a shield. Okay, let's say this is a non-conductive shield. So there will be two coupling. Okay, one will be coupling direct from conductor one to conductor two. Another one will be coupling from conductor one to the shield. This is the equivalent circuit. Okay, so you can see that this part is coupling from conductor one to conductor two. Okay, so another part is basically conductor one actually couple over to the shield. Okay, let's say this is a conduct shield. Over this diagram here, you can see that the ground is only at one end. Okay, remember what we have discussed on electric field coupling. Okay, when this magnetic field actually couple over from conductor one to the shield, okay, this part potentially can become an antenna. And once they become an antenna, they basically capable to either radiate out or they pick up the noise. Okay, so this can be become a source of problem on EMC. Hence, it's very crucial that we ground on both ends in order to solve this issue. So this is one example. Okay, we must not only ground at only one end. Okay, it's always important to ground on both ends. So this is one of the discussion that we're going to discuss today. Next, okay, so non-magnetic shield ground at both ends. Okay, so this is another case. Okay, we, we ground on both ends. A non-magnetic shield ground at both ends cause a shield current to flow. And this shield current can induce a voltage into conductor two. This voltage induced in conductor two will tend to cancel the voltage induced into it due to conductor one, if and only if the mutual inductor between conductor one and two is equivalent to the mutual inductor between conductor two and the shield. Okay, otherwise, shielding against magnetic field will not be 100% effective. Okay, so let's take a look over here. So this is conductor one. Okay, this is the shoe. This is conductor two. Okay, this is the victim. This is the source of the noise. This is the shoe that we want to set up to protect conductor two. So as the, we discussed on magnetic field, when there is a current flow, okay, there will be coupling. Okay, so from here you can see that there are two forms of coupling. One is conductor one to conductor two. Another one is conductor one to the shield. So this is the coupling happen. Okay, so let's take a look on the shield. Okay, when this coupling happen, okay, this become a voltage source. And what happen is this will actually enable a current to flow. Okay, see over here. So when there's a 
coupling coefficient from conductor one to the shield, it induces a voltage which results a current to flow. And when there's a current flow, again, this may potentially couple from the shield to the conductor two. So therefore, over here for this conductor two, you can see that one part is actually induced from conductor one. Another part is actually induced from the shield. And you can see that there is some cancellation effect. Hence, it's actually ideal to have current flow opposed to current I1. So you can see that this shield current, they actually flow in the opposite direction of the source current, which result in cancelling of the induced voltage, which is desired. Okay, so this is the area that we want to focus, the bit dim here. So this is the bit dim that we want to focus. Okay, so what is the induced voltage over? So this is the induced voltage that is coupled from conductor one to conductor two. I mean the final induced voltage. So you can see that it's J omega M1 to I1 here. Okay, minus away this effect, J omega M2 S I S. Okay, so this is the result induced voltage over to conductor two. This part remain unchanged. This JW M2S is here. This is IS. So this is IS here. So how can I obtain my IS? Let's take a look over here. So this is the IS, the current flow. Okay, I have the voltage source, which is J omega M2S I1, okay, which I put it on top here, JW. M1S I1. Okay, so next, okay, I have the induced voltage. How to get the IS is basically the induced voltage divided by the total admittance, which consists of the inductor and the resistor RS here. So this is how I finally get this part here. In short, this is actually the value of IS. Next. Okay, I assume that coupling coefficient 1, 2 is almost the same as coupling coefficient from conductor 1 to the shield. Okay, because they are actually located about the same place. Okay, so in simple word, okay, the shield actually wrapped around the conductor 2. So the distance is about the same. So therefore, I assume that the coupling coefficient is about the same. So after I have declared this assumption, Okay, I replace this M1S with M12 as shown over here. Okay, so this is the equation. I see a common factor. Okay, so from here you can see that J omega M12 I1 is a common factor. So I take this one. So I, I have this one here. And this part is taken out because of the common factor, which I actually obtained this equation here. Okay, so what I need to do is I do a common factor here. So I take this one multiplied by J omega ls plus rs which appeared over here okay so okay again i need to make another assumption okay i assume ls is almost equal to the coupling coefficient from conductor 2 to s okay the explanation is mentioned here for a coincer cable okay all of the flux due to the shield current is and cycle the inner conductor the inductor of the shield LS is equal to the mutual inductor between the shield and the inner conductor M2S. So this is the assumption that I need to make in order to simplify the equation. I replace this with LS. You can see that these two terms actually cancel each other. So this is what I actually finally achieve. Okay, with this, I like to end my discussion. So please look up for my next video in order to fully understand the shielding effectiveness on magnetic field coupling.